Well, Hong Kong authorities have accelerated the legislative process to pass Article 23, the city's own national security law. Now, the law covers the offences of treason, insurrection, espionage, sabotaging national security, theft of state secrets and external interference. Maximum penalties for some of them include life imprisonment. Uh, Article 23 is meant to complement the Beijing-imposed national security law, which only covers four offences. After Chinese authorities urged swift action on the bill at the recently concluded two sessions, Hong Kong's Legislative Council convened a special session for the first time and a second reading of the bill on the 8th of March. The bill's committee then took six days to scrutinize the clauses before handing the amended bill to the council on the 13th of March. And many of the proposed amendments have effectively made the bill tougher than its original draft at the first reading. Under the amended law, Hong Kong's chief executive can make subsidiary legislation after consulting the executive council. Lawmakers added this clause to deal with unforeseen circumstances. This includes specifying a class of people as public officers to safeguard state secrets. Lawmakers renamed a clause on external interference to external interference endangering national security. And this makes clear that normal international exchanges do not come under the offence. Suspects who fail to appear before court after a warrant is issued will be considered absconders. Lawmakers had proposed to remove the previous requirement of a six-month wait to give the security chief maximum flexibility to handle absconders. CNA's Deborah Wong shares with us how the changes to Article 23 were received. The bill attracted heavy criticism from the West for what's seen as a further erosion of Hong Kong's freedoms. Now, authorities have hit back, saying that similar laws in those jurisdictions are far more extensive and that the city also has a right to protect itself. Now, this new law comes as Hong Kong seeks to strengthen its status as an international financial hub by courting foreign investors. And when asked if the passing of this new security bill would backfire on such plans, authorities said foreign businesses believe that the law could offer stability that's key to economic growth. Deborah Wong, CNA, Hong Kong. Well, let's get some further analysis. We're joined by Andrew K.P. Leung, China strategist and chairman at Andrew Leung International Consultants. Uh, Mr. Leung, help us first unpack the extra powers that have been injected into Article 23 and what some of the key legal flashpoints that you're seeing. Well, first of all, it must be distinguished uh, from the national security law, which had already been um, uh, enacted uh, for Hong Kong. Um, under the, uh, the, the, na the national security law, uh, which was already in place, uh, deals with uh, matters of succession, um, sub um, subversion, um, terrorism, uh, and collusion, whereas the Article 23 specifically um, refers to treason, uh, insurrection, uh, sabotage, and espionage. Uh, but in fact, the drawing out, um, drawing of all these uh, the legislative proposals uh, had um, involved a very detailed examination of similar legislation uh, in Western countries, um, including the United States, United Kingdom, and so on and so forth. Um, and in fact, some of the penalties uh, under Hong Kong's national um, uh, uh, Article 23 are, are much more lenient uh, compared with, for example, the United States. Uh, for example, the United States, similar um, uh, the Patriot Act and, and various other legislation uh, for treason, um, the sentence in the United States is death. Uh, for espionage, the sentence in the United States was death, whereas in Hong Kong, Article 23, um, for treason is life imprisonment, espionage is 20 years. So uh, this is only one of the examples uh, where the Hong Kong uh, um, administration has really um, leaving no stone unturned uh, to ensure that this um, necessary a plucking of the loophole, which has been outstanding for 27 years since uh, Hong Kong uh, became a special administrative region of China, um, has been addressed um, sufficiently 
uh, robustly, but also maintaining Hong Kong as an international city. Uh uh, are there no concerns, though, over the desire to fast-track this bill? The government statement citing the complex geopolitical national security risks. But what is the real sense of the timing and speed at which this bill was passed? Well, this comes at a time uh, when Beijing has just finished its uh, so-called two sessions, uh, which, of course, um, um, uh, uh, conducted um, to to listen to the delivery of the work report uh, by the premier and also reviewing uh, China's trajectory um, at a time when there are numerous headwinds uh, against China, um, including uh, threatening China's sovereignty and, and national security. Um, so, and and of course, China is now uh, relying on, on Hong Kong even more because um, at the same time when the Article 23 legislation was being debated, and there are a very clear signal from Beijing that the one country, mm. two systems formula is going to last forever. I mean, definitely beyond 2047. Yeah, uh, because uh, China wants Hong Kong to play mm. an important role in this trajectory. Well, you know, Hong Kong's leader, John Lee, to that point you just mentioned, has spent the past year trying to revive a business environment that's been battered by the pandemic curbs and China's economic slowdown to varying degrees of success. Doesn't this new law just make his job that much harder? Uh, in a way, uh, yes, uh, because there is a lot of um, Western uh, twisted uh, rhetoric uh, about this um, uh, Article 23 legislation. As I pointed out, it has been um, it's a constitutional um, uh, application. There's a provision uh, in Hong Kong's mini constitution, which is the basic law, which has left uh, unattended. Um, and in fact, the first attempt failed in 2003, and thereafter it was left unplugged, uh, resulting mm. in um, a series uh, of uh, socially disruptive and politically um, um, uh, highly uh, destabilizing events uh, mm. in the past uh, years, uh, including the so-called black clad um, riots um, and 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 this is um, uh, that's why the, the central government has put so much emphasis to get it over and done with so that Hong Kong can uh, go back to concentrate on his um, on his economy on expanding mm -hmm. Hong Kong's long-term role um, for the, the continuing trajectory of China well, Mr. Leung, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Andrew K.P. Leung, China strategist and chairman at Andrew Leung International Consultants.